I don't still be worried when you ask you not making people for anything. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Alright, <sighs> uh, Papa G. You're picking some tomatoes today. Yes, sir. Trying to get some. What do we left? Because you really damaged them a lot, but you got to work with the time because you do, you are not God. God knows everything's best. He falls the rain on the just and on the unjust. So you said that the rain kind of falls into the Yeah, and it, it burn up the trees. Too much water. So they don't be as they should. And it stopped the growth because the water is too much on it. Interesting. If it was level land, I wouldn't get anything off it. But because it's hillside, a lot of the water run off. So you have to give thanks for what you are reaping. Not because you might not get the crop that you had desire, but you can make back your money that you spend and then go again. In fact, you will never give up. You just have to keep rolling on. This patch was the drought damaged and then the rain came and did the rest of the damage. So, as you notice, there's not a lot of fruit on the trees. So the weather is changing so rapidly now you can't even keep up with it anymore. Yes. Uh, the One time you could say, okay. March, February, March is dry time. Not like that anymore. You have May that should give us some rain, which did not come. So the rain come in June. I plant in April, preparing for the rain for March to grow it. And then July would June would be a month where you reap and you would have so much rain. But it it gives us a turnaround. The month like March, dry, April, you get a little rain. May you now when you should get the rain to develop the, the trees and the fruits, it didn't happen. So I water it with by hand. And then June come now, when the crop should be ripe, ripening and destroy the fruits, the trees. Because at that stage, it doesn't need a lot of rain. Okay. Yeah. It's a so, and disadvantages. I'm just picking the few that is on the tree that is ripe. And then we have the bugs that go around and eat the fruit, the worm, the, the, the other bug is very smelly. He <laughs> changes the colors of the fruit. Yeah, let me show you one. See this? He just crawls on it and suck it out. And then it gives you this look. Yeah, it should be like this. Because you eat it, and people don't really buy those when they see it like that. Some other reason why we grow our own food is for self sustenance, right? You, at least you can eat from it, if you can sell some, get some money to pay your bills. 
and also to, to share with others too. You, you have more to give. If you have to go to the market to buy, you can't buy enough to give to so many people. But when you have, you can always give. Why I do this? I can help pay my bills light. If I'm sick and I have to go to the doctor, I can pay my bills, doctor bill, buy my medication. I don't have to go around asking and begging people for anything. Mm. I'm here because I love this and I do it so it can maintain the family. And I eat from it. And it supports me. I don't have to worry about food or anything. From the farm to the kitchen. It provides vitamins, minerals, everything that you... It will give you the exercise that your body needs. Because if you stay at home every day and no exercise, you frankly, you're going to get stiff up and your joints can't move as freely as they are to. But with doing this farming, it helps a lot with the exercise. I don't really have to go around and run up the hill or run down the hill. This, this exercise, it exercises your whole body. Mind, your mind brain, everything. Yes. Mm -hmm. So what about in terms of saving? Do you find that it's cheaper when you go to the market? Buy a market. It's cheaper when you do your own because you don't have to buy those things. You can sell from what you have. When you sell from what you have, you can put away your little savings and you can eat from it. And so you, it, it can sustain you. Yeah, when I used to go to the market on Fridays and buy my, my market stuff, I spent up to five, six thousand dollars on grown provisions. I don't have to do it again. You know, and, and God bless the two little bags that I am coming out with because you know everything is expensive. We have like three hundred dollars, three hundred dollars a pound for this, two hundred dollars a pound for that, and you can't buy more than a certain amount. And sometimes it don't last for a week, but you now you have things can last to right to the time because you can even blanch some of your things and put them up and preserve them so that you even when it's not in season, you still have it to use. Wow, Papa G, I went to Oka Tree, I come here, saw, uh, 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 uh. Man, let get some stuff, let get tough in the Oka, let me feel a pick them. Just one here. Let me get tough so fast. I know that was this one good. You know, I don't know if I will play some of you, I see what I'm going to do. Yeah, one thing to that, why I'm really happy that we're planting our own food is that we're not getting the real food like what we used to get in olden days. Nowadays they have these food and they call them GMO, they, do, they are seedless. You get certain food, no, 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 no seeds in it and that is not healthy for you. Other things are manufactured by a machine now, but when you plant your food, you know what you're planting. You put in your seed and you watch your seed grow and you get your food and you plant back your seed again. So definitely you, 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 your, your food will not stop because with the GMO ones, you can't plant them back. You don't get any seeds to plant back. So we're happy. It's a blessing to eat what you plant and and plant what you eat right instead of depending on going and buying because when you buy you don't know exactly what you are getting because sometimes it's not nutritional to the body but you know what you put in the earth you know what you're getting out and you know what is going into your body right. see what you have here in the bucket uh, one. another thing i think um Farming teach you patience because you plant a crop today, it doesn't come in today. You have some crops, three months, some like four, and you have some up to eight to ten months, up to a year. So if you don't have patience, you're kind of farming. <laughs> it's impossible. And it, it, it helps you to connect with the reality of Christ that 
you have to be patient even with people. Just like how you are, you have to be patient with the plant to be here so you can reap and earn and eat from it. For instance, you plant a yam today, you stick it, you put it on the stick, and you have to watch it grow for maybe 8 or 10 months before you can reap a yam. And that's, that's, that's a long time for you to put something in the ground and need it to eat and have to wait eight months for you to have something to eat. So it teaches really just patience with people, with everything you do, and with God. That's true. And, and I think that I talked about when you said that, that the best time to plant a tree was yesterday. You don't wait because the longer you wait, the longer you're going to stay together. Right. If you just keep saying, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, I'm, and you don't do anything about it, that's how it will be forever. So that's how you go ahead and do it. And when you look and see how it bears, you go and run and say, but, but just the idea day you plant it. And it, it is already time to reap. So it doesn't take that long. Just have some patience and you'll see everything come out in good stead. Look at this tree. It's a very small tree plant and it has 3, 6, 9, 11, 12, 13, 14 tomato and this little baby tree. It's just a blessing of the Lord. And you have to just be thankful and give him all the glory and all the praise. Everything time you plant a tree, you're going to be a, a hundred fold. Sometimes it just be like twenty fold, thirty fold, but then one another time you get a hundred fold. It's like you having a church or you having a crusade. And when you look, four or five people baptized. But when you listen to another crusade, 400 baptized, the people canceled they did not hear the message. It's just how they could accept that. Number. And they sometimes don't know what the message is still in their head, and they eventually give their life to the people. And you must always plant a tree because. If you don't eat it today, you will eat it tomorrow. So please like, subscribe, and share. So we planted this papaya tree. Uh, we never know it was a new tree. But now you can see that it's definitely a male tree based on the type of flowering it has here. So we definitely not going to get any food from this. So this has to go. So the leaves can be used for healing purposes. I guess it's not useless after all. So this is what they got from harvesting tomatoes today. Not too bad. <laughs>